Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to have a quick look at how we can deal with intersections between um, geometry uh, or in between particles and geometry. So I uh, have here just a uh, simple particle effect. It's just a sprite with a um, circular uh, effect on it. And you can see as we move the camera around, it's camera facing um, and it is clipping pretty badly with the floor. Uh, this is a very common problem you have with transparent effects, things like sprites, fire, smoke, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's a few ways we can fix it. Now, the uh, simplest and most common is to use what's called a depth fade, uh, and that is this node here. Uh, and what this does is it compares the position of the pixel to the comp to the position of the depth buffer. Uh, and if we go to the scene depth, um, scene depth is a um, a measure of how far away a pixel is from the camera um, and so by having a look and comparing the two I'll go back to lit uh, we're able to subtract one from the other uh, and create a depth effect so if I just do this using depth fade so this is an inbuilt node uh, works very nicely um, fade distance and then we'll recreate this from scratch in a second so with a fade distance of zero, now this is uh, no fading at all. You can see we get our hard edge. If I put in something like five units, now we've got a little bit of fade. Uh, and if we go back up to that 100, that's the default, we can see it's fading. And this works quite nicely. Um, if I move this up and re-trigger it, it's, uh, it's dynamic. Let me just make that local space make that a bit easier to deal with. There we go. Um, and you can see that it kind of responds nicely to the geometry um, underneath and has the camera moves and all that kind of stuff. So a very common way to do this. Like I say, what we're actually doing, well, we're comparing the, uh, let's get rid of this for a second, uh, comparing the pixel depth and the scene depth. So these are both things we can get hold of, pixel depth and scene depth. Um, now, pixel depth is the distance from the camera to the pixel being rendered. And because we're using a translucent or additive here, um, it's not the same as the scene depth. So the scene depth uh, ignores anything translucent or additive. And so that's why we're able to get two different values. Uh, and if I just bring up my pen, uh, I'll do a little diagram. I feel like I might have done this before. I've definitely covered this in some of my courses. Um, but if we have a floor plane, and then we have a, let's say a particle, and we have a camera up here, let's use another color. This is an eyeball, this is a camera. Um, if we consider this pixel here, and I'm going to draw a semi straight line from the camera to the floor, um, the pixel depth, this one up here, is this distance from the camera to the pixel, and the scene depth is the distance from the camera all the way to the scene. And so you can see they're different values. Um, if I undo those lines, we consider the pixel here at the intersection where it's happening. If I go through and draw my line again, um, you can see both the pixel depth and the scene depth are the same value because the distance is the same. So that's where it happens, where the intersection happens. And we can do a fade um, sort of dynamically as these distances get bigger between these two uh, along the angle um, or along the view angle. I can draw them like that, really. So that's the theory. Let's do it in practice. Um, so pixel depth and scene depth, well, if I sub just subtract uh, pixel depth, subtract the scene depth, um, that's going to give me a result. But not the correct one. Um, is it the right way around? It is that right round. I should have practiced this before I started going here we go um, so the other way around so the scene depth minus the, the pixel depth um, and you can't really see but there is actually a one pixel fade there uh, but if we divide this value by a large value uh, let's call this the fade distance same as we had before so if we divide that by 100 units we should get a nice soft fade and the uh, the way the scaling works is the um, the fade starts at zero here and then 100 units away, it's going to be doing uh, a value of 1. Um, of 
Cool. Now what we tend to do there is then saturate it. So we only have values between zero and one and nothing greater. Um, in case we want to use this for something like emissive, we wouldn't want this to sort of glow and glow and glow. Um, but that's how we kind of build this up. So we've got our, um, oops, over here. We've got our scene depth, which is the first uh, opaque thing being rendered. We've got the pixel depth, which is our object. Uh, and then we're dividing by a value to control the distance um, and then saturating it to clamp it between zero and one. Uh, and as I say, this inbuilt node does this calculation. So no point using uh, this from first principles unless you want to, or you want to do something funky with it. Um, and if we just compare the two, um, do that, make this a square again. You should see if I swap the two, it is pixel perfect exactly the same, which it is. Cool. That is the very common way of doing it, uh, using scene depth and using a depth fade. Um, but there are some other things we can do. So this is a particle. I'll turn off the um, the depth fade for now. Um, and we can see we're definitely getting clipping here in the ground. Um, now what we can do is in the Niagara system itself, there is a module called camera offset. Um, and what this will do is it will move our particle towards the camera but along the camera's direction. So if we do our sketch again, let's do this and let's use completely different colors just to be confusing. But there we go, they're all still colors. So here's my, my eyeball camera again. Um, this is rendered in view like this and it's clipping down here. What we can do, if I go back to my yellow, I can move my camera or move my sprite towards the camera. Um, so if I do this, and move it that way, um, it's going to look a little bit bigger, and we could control for that if we wanted, um, but it's no longer going to clip through the ground, but it doesn't look like it's moved in position because it's moved towards the camera. If our camera now moves over here, and we have a separate camera, something like that, um, we could do the same thing, and we're going to move our sprite towards the camera this way, something like that. Um, and so it's going to appear like it's still in the same position, but because it's moved towards the camera, it's not going to be clipping with the ground, uh, and we'll see um, sort of the illusion of, uh, of of fixing the clipping without moving where it is. So let's have a look at that. So the module is just called camera offset. Um, there it is, camera offsets inbuilt. Uh, and if I set a value here of let's say 50 units, you can see our sprite's got a little bit bigger, um, but it no longer appears to be clipping. If we go down to a little shallow angle right down here. You can see our clipping is still going to be there because moving towards the camera hasn't kind of come out of the ground. Um, but if I look at it from this angle, you can see it gets slightly bigger, but it no longer appears to be clipping, but it doesn't actually move in space because it's always moving towards the camera. Now this isn't going to always work. Um, it will create some errors. If I move this box, it should be clipping underneath the sprite. The sprite is at that grid intersection. Um, and as I move around, you can get some errors uh, kind of around corners. You can see we're seeing our sprite here. We shouldn't be able to do that. That should be clipped behind. But because we're moving it towards the camera, we're getting this error. So uh, if you've got geometry that you're intersecting with, that can cause problems. Um, but if you need to really highlight something, bring it forwards, uh, you can do that, um, do that that way. Cool, camera offset. Uh, if we're not using a particle, uh, we can do this directly in the material. Uh, so I hid this a bit earlier, but if we have a look down here, um, exact same logic, we're taking the camera's position and the object's position, subtract one from the other to get a direction vector and normalize it. And then if we use world position offset, we can offset along that camera direction vector. Um, and so if I now go in and put in a value of something like 50, it's brought that towards the camera. And you can see the clipping isn't happening, it's not floating, um, but it's the same problem clipping down here uh, or clipping with the uh, with the geometry. You get some weirdness when it's close to things, but depending on what you're doing, that can be um, that can be acceptable. Okay. Uh, lastly, another thing we can do um, is we could just disable depth first entirely. Um, if I do that and click apply, it will now not check anything against the sprite. Um, but that applies to all geometry. 
So no matter where we are in the world, that's going to render in top of everything because the depth test has been disabled. Um, it's doing some really interesting things with the motion blur. I wonder if that's, yeah, it doesn't really like that, does it? I hate motion blur. It's awful. It's so bad. It causes all sorts of horrible issues, but there we go. Um, but yeah, a bit overkill, uh, or at least if this is what you want, this is uh, one way to do it, but disable the depth test, um, the motion blur happening here. We maybe need to like recreate the previous frame and, and things, but that's not for this video. Um, so yeah, different ways we can fix our intersections. Depth fade, really common, um, probably the one you're gonna use 99% of the time, um, just to sort of blend out those edges. Um, we can also disable it entirely um, until it'll render on top of everything. Might be useful kind of UI elements, or if you've got kind of like a seeing through um, walls kind of map projection sci-fi type thing, that might work quite nicely because you don't want to ever hide what you're rendering uh, on your sprites. You'll just always want to see it. Um, or alternatively, we can do this camera offset either in the material or in the particle and kind of bring the particle towards the camera um, where it will still clip. Oh, I need to put my depth test back on. Just apply this. There we go. It will still clip, um, but it will clip with any objects that are really close to it incorrectly. And so you'll get some errors with that as well. So um, of course you can combine these. So using camera offset and depth fade, um, probably the thing you want to do. I don't want you to turn off output depth and velocity. And so now we've got our camera towards us. It's going to look weird on the corner. You can see there, but it's not as weird and not clipping as badly um, as it was before. Cool. All right. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It's a useful little tip you can use in your uh, in your own work. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments or uh, anything you'd like me to make a tutorial about, please do reach out. I am always interested um, and happy to help. Um, big thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. Uh, if you want to learn more about this kind of tech art, VFX art stuff, I've got some courses available on Gumroad and Udemy. Um, go and check those out, and I uh, will see you all next time.